हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन द कंटिन्यूशन विद द प्रीवियस पार्ट्स ऑफ आवर चैप्टर वर्क एंड एनर्जी इन दिस पार्ट वी विल स्टडी अबाउट व्हाई देयर इज अ नीड फॉर रिजोल्यूशन ऑफ अ फोर्स फैक्टर एंड आफ्टर दैट वी विल डिराइव ए जनरल एक्सप्रेशन फॉर वर्क डन एंड आल्सो वी विल स्टडी द टाइप्स ऑफ वर्क एज पॉजिटिव वर्क नेगेटिव वर्क एंड जीरो वर्क विद सम एग्जाम्पल्स so first let us understand why there is a need for resolution of a force vector students in our previous class we have learned that the work is defined as work is equal to force into displacement force into displacement but this formula is applicable only in that situation in which the object is displaced in the same direction in which the force is acting it means if the direction of displacement is along the direction of the force then only we can apply this formula that is work is equal to force into displacement that's why we need a general expression for work done so that we can apply that formula in every case but before deriving the general expression for work done we need to understand what is the resolution of the force vector and why the need why there is a need of resolution of force vector so first let us understand resolution of a force vector you know force is a vector quantity but why there is a need for resolution of force vector let us take a situation suppose this friends there is a wooden block there is wooden block of certain mass Okay. Here, this is the wooden block of certain mass M, which is placed on the ground floor. And there is a string attached to this wooden block. Let us say O A. O A. O A is the string which is attached to this. wooden block now a man tries to push sorry pull this wooden block along this string oa and he applies a force f f newton along the string oa but what he observes he observes that after some time the block is displaced from the position a to the position the block is displaced from the position a to the position b horizontally let us say the displacement is the displacement is equal to s okay so in this situation what we are observing the man is applying force along the direction of oa along oa but the block is displacing horizontally it means the force which is applied by the man is not completely utilized in order to bring the displacement in this block only a component of this force is utilized in order to bring the displacement and the rest component is used to balance the weight of the block it means here we can say that this force f which is applied by the man is divided into two component what are these two components first horizontal component horizontal component and the other one is vertical component other one is vertical component this is the horizontal component this oc 
OC is the horizontal component while OD is the vertical component of this force F which is acting around OE. Okay students? Now it is clear from this figure that OC is the force which is responsible for describing the displacement S in this law. Why this vertical component is balancing the weight of this block. Okay, students. So I hope it is clear. If the whole force is utilized, then the block will go along the edge of OA. But you can see the block is displaced horizontally. It means only some component of force is utilized. Okay, that's why there is a need for resolution of vector. Resolution means the force that is actually applied is divided into component. Division of the force. Can you say? You can say resolution of a force vector. Okay? So, that's why there is a need for resolution of force vector. I hope it is clear. Now, let us understand if we have a given force vector, then how we derive the horizontal and vertical component of that force vector. Now students, let us understand how to resolve a given force vector into its two components that is horizontal component and vertical component. So suppose we have given a force vector OA. This is a force vector OA. This OA represents the magnitude as well as direction of the force F. Okay. Let us suppose the force vector OA is inclined to the horizontal at a certain angle theta. Okay. So whenever we have to resolve this force vector into its two components, that is horizontal component and vertical component, then what we do? We have to make rectangle with the help of this force vector OA. So in order to make rectangle, we draw a perpendicular from this point A to the horizontal. Let us say this perpendicular intersects the horizontal at a certain point B. Okay. Again, we draw a perpendicular from the point O like this. Let us say this is the point C. Now we join C to A. Okay. So here you can see that we have formed a rectangle with the force vector OA. Okay. Now this OB that is the four that is the vector adjacent to the angle theta. The vector adjacent to angle theta is known as horizontal component. Is known as horizontal component. While the vector perpendicular to the horizontal component, that is OC, is known as vertical component of this force F. Okay? So OB is the horizontal component and OC is the vertical component. So we have resolved the force vector into its horizontal as well as vertical component. Now we have to determine the value of these two components. That is, what will be the value of horizontal component and what will be the value of vertical component. Now let us find. So in order to calculate the value of horizontal component, we take the help of the right angle triangle O, A, B. Let us see it separately. We draw it here. This is the right angle triangle O A B. Okay, students. Now here we have given angle A O B equal to theta. So this is equal to theta. Hypotenuse that is O A is F. 
OA is M. Now here you can see that angle B equal to 90 degree. Angle B equal to 90 degree. And the side opposite to 90 degree is hypotenuse. It means in this right angle triangle OAB, OA is hypotenuse, which is equal to F. OA is hypotenuse, which is equal to F. Okay. Now, what will be the base and perpendicular in this right angle triangle OAB? So you know the side adjacent to the given angle, the side adjacent to theta is known as base. So here OB is adjacent side, so we can say OB is base. In the same way, the side opposite to the given angle, that is the side opposite to theta, is known as perpendicular. So here AB is the side which is opposite to theta, hence it is perpendicular. I hope it is clear. Hypotenuse, base and perpendicular is clear. Now we are interested to calculate the value of one minute. Okay. We are interested to calculate the value of horizontal component that is OB. Now you know sin theta, cos theta and tan theta. Sin theta is perpendicular upon hypotenuse. Cos theta is base upon hypotenuse. And tan theta is perpendicular upon base. Let us see what we have to calculate. We have to calculate OB, that is base. We have to calculate base and we know the value of hypotenuse equal to F. So we have to use that ratio in which there is base and also hypotenuse. So here in sin theta you can see base is not, so we cannot use this ratio. In cos theta you can see that base is also there and hypotenuse is also. So we can use cos theta relation. Tan theta can also be not used. Why? Because hypotenuse is not there. We have to use that relation in which there is base and hypotenuse. So what we, we will we use? We use cos theta. Now let us find the value of cos theta here. So here we can write cos of theta cos theta is base upon hypotenuse. Here base is equal to OB. So we can write OB divided by hypotenuse means OA. Again it can be written as cos theta equal to OB divided by OA. OA is equal to F. So we can write here now let us cross multiply then what we get OB equal to F cos theta. Okay students? And what is OB? OB is the horizontal component of this force. So we can write horizontal horizontal component of force is equal to F cos theta. So always remember whenever you have to resolve a force into two components horizontal component and vertical component such that that force vector makes an angle theta with the horizontal then horizontal component is equal to f cos theta. Horizontal component is always equal to f cos theta. Students you have to make the proper notes with the help of these things that we are writing here. Okay. Now I am going to erase it. Again we have to calculate the value of vertical component in the same way. Now let us see how to calculate the value of vertical component of force. Now here you can see that this angle is theta. So this angle is also equal to theta. Why? Because these are alternate interior angles. And you know alternate interior angles are equal to each other. So if this is theta, then this will also be theta. Now we are interested to calculate the value of vertical component. So we can take the help of the right angle triangle OCA. Let us draw it separately.
so this is c o and a now let us see what are given here we have the value of oa oa is f also angle c a o is equal to theta so this is equal to theta given now first let us find which is hypotenuse which is base and which is perpendicular so here it is clear that this angle is equal to 90 degree and the side opposite to 90 degree is hypotenuse it means in this right angle triangle oac oa is hypotenuse which is already equal to the force f okay so now let us determine base and perpendicular so this is angle theta and the side adjacent to theta is ca so ca is base here and the side opposite to theta is oc so oc is perpendicular here. okay now we have hypotenuse base and perpendicular now let us see what we have to calculate we have to calculate the vertical component and vertical component is oc it means we have to determine the value of perpendicular so we have to find that ratio in which there is perpendicular and hypotenuse now you know sin theta is perpendicular hypotenuse cos theta is base hypotenuse so which relation we use this relation we cannot use why because in this relation perpendicular is not but here you can see perpendicular is also there and hypotenuse is also so we can use sin theta in this particular triangle now let us write the value of sin theta here so here we can write sin theta equal to perpendicular divided by hypotenuse the perpendicular is oc and the hypotenuse is oa so we can write it as sin theta equal to oc and oa oa is equal to f so we can write here f now cross multiply then what we get oc equal to f sin theta but what is oc oc is the vertical component of force so what we can write vertical component of force equal to f sin theta okay students so this is the relation for or formula for vertical component of force so i hope it is clear whenever you have given a force then you can resolve it into two components horizontal component as well as vertical component horizontal component is equal to f cos theta and vertical component is equal to f sin theta okay now let us take a numerical in order to understand it better again let me tell you that you have to make the proper notes with the help of the things that i am writing on the green board okay now let us see suppose we have given a force we have given a force of 5 newton this is the force of 5 newton and it is inclined at an angle of 45 degree with the horizontal then we have to determine the horizontal component of this force and also the vertical component you can draw it that this is the horizontal component and this is the this is the vertical component okay but what will be the value of these two components you know h is equals to f cos theta you have to use the formula what is the value of f here we have given 5 newton cos and theta is 45 degree so we can write here 45 degree so it is equal to 5 newton into cos 45 you know value of cos 45 is 1 upon root 2 so it is equal to 5 by root 2 newton 
so this is the horizontal component it is equals to 5 by root 2 In the same way, you can determine the vertical component B equals to F, but sine theta. Okay. Let us put the values. F is given as y theta into sine of theta with sine of forty five degree, sine of forty five degree. So y theta into sine forty five is again equal to one by root. So it is also equal to five by root two newton. So I hope it is clear. Whenever you have given a force vector which is inclined at a certain angle, then you can determine the horizontal component by using formula f cos theta and vertical component by using formula f sin theta. So this is also equal to five by root two newton. Okay, students. So I hope it is clear. Now we will move to the next topic that is general expression for work done. General expression means that expression which is applicable to every situation. We have learned that if work done is equal to force into displacement, but that formula is applicable only when the object is displaced in the same direction in which the force is applied. Now we are going to derive such an expression that. Which is applicable in every situation. Now let us see. Suppose the student there is a wooden block. Okay, and a man is pulling it along OA. Along OA. Okay. With a force F, but what he observes, he observes that when he pulls this wooden block of certain mass M with a force F along the direction of OA, then the block will displace horizontally. After some instant of time, the block will reach at here. Let us say this is the position B and this is the position A. So. When the man is pulling this wooden block with a force F, then the object will displace from the point A to the point B. Let us say the displacement is equal to S in this situation. Okay. Now here you can see that this force is inclined to horizontal with a certain angle. Let us say this angle is equal to. So it is obvious that we can resolve this force into its two components, that is horizontal component as well as vertical component. So this is equal to horizontal component. This. Let us say this is OC, and the vertical component is this much. Let us say OD. So you know. OC that is the horizontal component of force, which is equal to F cos theta. You know the formula. And OD is the vertical component, which is equal to F sine of theta. So, which force is responsible for displacing this wooden block? It is obvious. The force F cos theta. Is responsible due to this the object is displaced from the point A to the point B, and this vertical component F sine theta balances the weight of the object, which is equal to mg. So mg and F sine theta will cancel out each other. But this force F cos theta displaces the object from position A to the position B. So I hope it is clear. Now students, you know the formula for work done. Work done. Work done is defined as magnitude of magnitude of force in the in the direction of displacement into 
into displacement into displacement okay students now let us see here magnitude of force in the direction of displacement so here from this figure it is clear that the magnitude of force this is the direction of displacement and the magnitude of force which is in this direction is f cos theta f cos theta so in place of magnitude of force what we can write f cos theta into displacement is s so here we have work done work done that is equal to f s cos of theta okay students so this is the general expression for work done which is applicable in every situation either the force is in same direction of the displacement or it is inclined at a certain angle to the displacement we can apply it everywhere in every situation so this is the general expression for work done okay students now i am going to erase it you have to make the proper notes now let us understand what does this relation means so we have derived a relation w that is work done equal to force f into displacement into cos of theta where theta is what theta is the angle between this force vector and the displacement so with the help of this expression we can write the work done depends on magnitude of force magnitude of force applied magnitude of force applied second the displacement as displacement as in the direction in the direction of force okay and the third factor on which work done depends is cosine value of the theta cosine of angle theta between between the force vector and displacement and displacement okay students again here you can imply that what greater the magnitude of force greater the magnitude of force larger the work done will be greater the displacement larger the work done will be now let us see how the work done depends on cos of theta we will see it now see for acute angles acute angles you know when theta is angle is greater than 0 degree but less than 90 degree then these angles are said to be acute angles so for theta is greater than 0 degree but less than 90 degree cos of theta is positive means value of cos theta when theta lies between 0 and 90 then it is positive and if cos theta is positive then here work done will also be positive so we can define positive work as when the angle between the force vector and displacement is greater than 0 degree but less than 90 degree then the work done is said to be positive now let us see what happen for obtuse angles obtuse angles obtuse angles means theta is greater than 90 degree but less than 180 degree 
So when theta lies between 90 degree and 180 degree, then cos theta is equal to value of cos theta is negative. And if value of cos theta is negative, then from this formula we can say work done is also negative. Okay. So we can define negative work done. Negative work done is that in which angle between the force vector and displacement is greater than 90 degree but less than 180 degree. One more situation we have, what happens when theta is equal to 90 degree? So when theta is equal to 90 degree, then cos of 90 degree equal to 0, 0, cos of 90 is 0. Hence we can write the work done as F into S cos of 90 degree. Here we can write F into S into cos 90 equal to 0, that is equal to 0. It means the work done will be equal to work done will become 0. So on the basis of theta, there are three types of work, positive work, negative work and zero work. Positive work, when the angle between force and displacement is greater than 0 but less than 90 degree. Negative work, when the angle between force and displacement is greater than 90 degree but less than 180 degree and 0 when both the force and displacement are perpendicular to each other. Now we will discuss each of these work one by one with some examples. Now let us see. First, positive. Positive. When displacement takes in the same direction of the force or application of force, then we can say the work done will be positive. If, if displacement is in same direction, same direction of same direction of force and one more thing that we have done what makes makes an acute angle makes an acute angle acute angle means theta is greater than 0 degree but less than 90 degree then this situation work done is positive or work is said to be positive. Suppose here is an object, we apply a force on it and the object will get displaced in the same direction. Okay, So this is the initial position and this is the position of the certain instrument of time. So here you can see this is the displacement. Okay. So the direction of displacement is also here and the force is also in the same direction. Then in this situation we can see work done to be positive. One more thing, if this is the force vector, this is the force vector and it inclines at an angle to the displacement such that this angle is greater than 0 degree. This angle is greater than 0 degree but less than 90 degree. That is acute angle. So in these two situations, work done is said to be positive. When the direction of displacement and force are in the same direction, and if force makes an acute angle with the direction of displacement. So this is the meaning of positive one. Now let us see negative one. negative work. So what will be the definition? So work is said to be negative when the direction of displacement is in opposite to direction of force. When displacement displacement is in Opposite to 
डायरेक्शन अपोजिट टू द डायरेक्शन ऑफ फोर्स और वी कैन से डिस्प्लेसमेंट मेक्स एन ऑप्टिव साइबर विथ द डायरेक्शन ऑफ फोर्स और मेक्स एन ऑप्टिव्स ऑप्टिव्स एंगल ऑप्टिव्स एंगल मेक्स थीटा इज ग्रेटर देन 90 डिग्री But less than one and three. So in that situation, work is said to be negative. Suppose you are displacing a very heavy box placed on the floor. This is the heavy box. Okay, and you are applying the force in this direction. Okay. So what happens when you apply a larger amount of force on this heavy box? Then after some extent of time, it starts moving a little bit. But as soon as it starts moving, then there arises one more force due to the relative motion between two surfaces, and that force is force of friction, which is acting in opposite direction to the direction of motion. So this is the force of friction. Let us say it is F X. But the block moves in this direction. So this is the direction of displacement. This is the direction of displacement, and this is the direction of force of friction. So here you can see both are opposite to each other. So we can see work done by frictional force. Work done by frictional force is negative. Why? Because the direction of displacement is opposite to the direction of force of friction. So I hope it is clear. Another thing is that suppose this is the force vector and this is the displacement. So here you can see the angle between them is greater than 90 degree. This theta is greater than 90 degree. Means obtuse angle. So in this case also work done is negative. So work done is said to be negative when the force is opposite to the direction of displacement. Or we can say force makes an angle of obtuse angle with the direction of displacement. Then in these two situations, work done is negative. Now let us see zero work. When there is a 90 degree of angle between force and displacement, then the work done is equal to zero. So we can say when when displacement displacement is perpendicular perpendicular to force force or makes an angle of 90 degree then the work is said to be zero okay now let us see the example of zero work let us take the motion of motion of moon Around, around Earth. Motion of moon around the Earth. How is the example of zero work? Let us suppose this is the orbit in which the moon is revolving. This is the moon, okay, and it is revolving around the Earth. This is what? This is the You know, for revolution, there is a need of force, and that force is centripetal force, which is always acting along the line, joining the moon to the center of the earth. So this is the direction of force. Okay, 
and the direction of motion is along the tangent. So this is the direction of motion of moon. So we can say this is the displacement and this is the force and the angle between these two is 90 degree. So here the work done will be C. Why? Because here is an angle of 90 degree between the displacement and force vector. Okay. The other example you can take, suppose there is a pony who is standing on the platform with a heavy luggage over his head. Okay. Now, he is just standing on the platform. In order to carry this luggage over his head, he has to apply a force in upward direction. And this force must be equal to the weight of this luggage. Weight of this luggage. It means he is constantly applying a force in upward direction. But there is no displacement. There is no displacement in luggage. You can see here the displacement is zero. So here what we can write? You know, work done is equal to F into S into cos of theta. So here we have cos theta into S and here S is 0. So it is equal to 0. So here in this case also you can see that the work done is equal to 0. Why? Because there is no displacement. Now let us take the same situation and understand it more clearly. Now suppose the same pulley who is carrying the luggage, the same pulley who is carrying the luggage, is applying the force to this gear. It is up to he is applying the force on the luggage in upward direction. Now it starts moving in horizontal direction. After some instant of time, the pulley reaches at this position. And he has carried the same luggage. And again he is applying the force. Now let us see the displacement in luggage. Initially the displacement will at this point and finally it reaches at this point. So the displacement is this much. Okay. So this is the direction of force and this is the direction of displacement. And here you can see clearly the angle between force and displacement. So what we can write? W is equal to F into S cos of theta. So F into S and cos 90 degree. And you know cos 90 degree, 90 degree is 0. So F into S into 0. So it is equal to 0. So again, it is the example of 0 work done. Okay. Now we will take some situations and try to find which type of work is there. First we take a person, a person lifts, lifts an object. Let us see this type of what is in this situation. Suppose this is the floor on which there is an object placed. This object has certain mass and, and you know when it is placed here, then there is a force of gravity acting in downward direction. And this force of gravity is equal to weight of this block, that is we can say m into g. So this is the force of gravity which is acting on this block in downward direction. Okay. Now if we have to lift this object in upward direction from here to here, then we must have to maintain a force or apply a force equal to mg in upward direction. So what we do in order to lift this object, we apply a force F in upward direction. Let us suppose the object is lifted from the position A to the position B. To the position B. Okay. It means there is a displacement. 
let us say the displacement is s so the object is displaced from this position a to the position b so we can say the direction of displacement is in this direction okay and the force that we have applied is also in upward direction is it clear here you can see the direction of force and direction of displacement both are in same direction and if both have the same direction then it means work done is positive so for the uplifting force for this force which is in upward direction the work done is positive but in the same situation let us see the work done by force of gravity so here you can see that the displacement is in this direction but the force of gravity is acting in downward direction the force of gravity is acting in downward direction okay so the direction of the force and displacement both are opposing to each other and if both the direction of force and displacement are opposite then it means work done is negative okay so in the same situation work done is positive by the uplifting force while the work done is negative for force of gravity okay sir let us take one more situation there is a car standing on the road when the driver starts the engine when engine starts then what happens the force is applied in this direction the force is applied in this direction and due to this force the car displaces from the position a to the position b the car displaces from the position a to the position b let us say the displacement is s okay so here you can see that the direction of force is in this direction and the displacement is also in the same direction so we can say the work is said to be positive why because the force and displacement both are the same direction now students let us take a situation there is a car which is moving okay now the driver tries to stop the car and he applies brake he applies brake okay but what will happen as soon as he apply the brake the car will not stop at the same speed of time the car stops after covering a certain displacement let us say the car stops after covering a displacement of s this is the position a and this is the position b so the car stops after covering a displacement of s s now students let us identify the direction of force by brakes if you consider this situation then the car is moving from a to b so this is the direction of motion but here you can see after some instant of time the car stops it means the force by brakes opposing the direction of motion so the force of brakes must be in opposite direction now it is clear that this is the direction of force and this is the direction of displacement both are opposite to each other so work done is negative so students thank you in this part we have discussed the various types of work with some examples like positive work negative work and zero work thank you students